Troglodytes. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Time for our weekly mod collection demo shop update. Last week in the Gibson European demo shop, there was a huge influx of guitars. I mean, the store maybe posts one to three guitars a week, but we had like 50 of them. And that was because of this. The shop used to only be open to Netherlands and France customers, but they expanded it to Germany, Spain, Italy, and Belgium, with more countries coming soon. So the European demo shop will eventually be the European demo shop. But we saw something very similar happen in the US demo shop. We can't just call it the US demo shop anymore. Gibson's opening it up to Canada. However, their wording's a little bit confusing. They're only offering certain guitars to Canada for a limited time. So Canadians, you can't rejoice quite yet, but there's always my forwarding service if there's something that they won't ship to you. That's our current event this week, let's go ahead and check out the mod collection offerings first. This week was fantastic, last week was kind of a bore snore, but this time we had all the custom colors, weird crazy modifications, and some finishes that were just out there. Let's check them out. So first off we have one of these things, and I didn't realize it till just now, it's Les Paul Jr. Gibbs 6 DC Bass. It's a six string bass, they did that modification again. I missed their last six string bass conversion, and this one I didn't even realize that they had done it. To be honest, these were like, what, 700 brand new? Maybe a thousand? So to pay 3,000 for one for that work, it would be cheaper just to pay someone else to convert it. But you also have to factor in, there's been some refinish work done, kind of like a fool's gold color. And you got, looks like tortoise shell plastics, but it looks like our neck was left pure black, and then they did that fool's gold finish down here. I don't remember those things having a comfort cut either, but maybe they did. And it looks like the front of the body also has that fool's gold finish. Okay, that's a little bit cooler than I thought at first. Next up we have a 59 reissue 335 in antique green burst. You guys know me, I like my vintage looking finishes and I swear I've seen this on like a cheap guitar before. So it's kind of like the satin arterial burst 335 I've reviewed and documented. I was on the fence about this one. The only thing I didn't like is the fact that it's a very flat burst right here. I would have preferred it to have a little bit more of a rounded shape, but I loved everything else about this one. So I went ahead and bit the bullet. I bought this one. We'll see a review and demo. Because a brand new 59 335, it's 6,000, so it was a $500 discount. I think they could have asked at least a $500 premium. And I don't think I've ever had a historic 335 before in a 59 style with the long pick guard. Bigsby's aren't my favorite, but it looks like it left the factory stock like that, and that's not a conversion. So we'll see this one next week. Next up, an SG standard in the 61 style, except for it's no longer in the 61 style. <laughs> they must have converted the pick guard to 68 batwing style, okay. But we've got two uncovered humbuckers, and then looks like a flat cover on the middle pickup. Something going on right there. White pick guard in general, yeah, they really went late 60s on this thing with the witch hat knobs. And then they left the headstock alone for the most part. But the specs say two volumes, two tones, but then it says a push-pull bridge volume potentiometer for bridge coil split. Okay, but that still doesn't answer. What What is that? It just looks like a felt pad. I'm not sure. Were they trying to use up old stock Kirk Douglas SG pick guards? That's the only thing I could think of because those had white pick guards, but you think they would have utilized that and routed the body of this SG. Here is one of those 70s deluxe gold tops. Nothing really that fancy except for <laughs> harmonica bridge. So I had somebody reach out to me, is Gibson bringing the harmonica bridge back? And it certainly looks like it's a newer one, but if you really zoom in there, the weakest part of an original harmonica bridge are the slots. They were very weak metal, and as you would try to adjust them, they would get all chewed up, and eventually you just can't even work them anymore. So it looks like they beefed that up, so you don't have to worry about that problem anymore. But yeah, maybe we'll see harmonica bridges again. They also put a Bigsby on it, so they're just trying to give it extra 70s vibes, despite most deluxes not coming stock with a harmonica bridge. I wasn't a big fan of that gold top, but this thing, oh yeah. So this time they took a Cherry Sunburst Deluxe and just completely transformed it with the black plastics. Obviously, they put a third P90 in there, that's always fun. Looking at the back, they didn't do too much except for swap out our tuners. Looks like the small button style, not my favorite. Captured photographer's soul. But then they also have a dark tortoiseshell pick guard on there. Now how did they wire it? Darn, three volume, master tone. Mod shop guys, do one just regularly, cause that's what I like. Not everybody wants complete control. Sometimes simplicity with three pickups is the way to go. Now this darn thing I'm upset about. Come on, Gibson. This was their title, so this is what everybody saw on the main page, right? Gibson Mod Collection, 335 Ebony. But then you click on it with silver metallic sides, $2,500 discount and cool. 
So at first glance, it's like, okay, it's a really dark ebony finish. But if you look really closely, it looks like we have a P94 in the neck position. So that's a P90 pickup in the size of a humbucker. And then we have mixed match hardware. So you got silver and gold going on. Then those little rascals look back here. Your neck is silver. They left the original black finish be a stinger. Well, maybe that's not the original finish, but you can see they even swapped out our tuners. They gave that the gold screw. They left those silver. That particular stinger does look incredibly well placed. And then it's really hard to appreciate, but the edges of the instrument are done up in silver, whereas the back is also black. This was the true sleeper one this entire week. I blame you, Gibson, for me missing it, but just by calling it that. <laughs> But well, that's alright, we've already reviewed a regular 335 anyways, I'll be happy with my snot burst. Which hey, now that I think about it, I once did a Rock or Not episode on a Firebird that was done up in that alien green burst. Now I'm really excited to review that. Next up we have a Smokehouse Burst Studio. Nothing too fancy here, except for we got the return of Shredder. Pickup covers for Dirty Fingers pickups. But this time, they're not Dirty Fingers, they're just exposing the flat pole pieces. Interesting. And besides that six string bass, this was probably one of the more weird ones. So this is a legit 1959 Les Paul Standard reissue in Evil Twin Satin. So I can't comment too much on the finish. It's not my favorite, but what have they done to this? What 59 reissue gets a single coil in the middle pickup? That's just hilarious. So you get black hardware on the rest of it. That's something that kind of cheapens the vibe of this. I mean, for me, historic style instruments, it's all about that cream plastics and the binding makes them look old. Whereas this, I'll go ahead and say it, it kind of looks cheap. It doesn't look like a 59 reissue anymore. Essentially, it looks like they just kind of oversprayed a dark satin finish over top of an already existing cherry sunburst, and then they decided to make it interesting with their pickup configuration. Here was another one I missed, Chai Mist. Hey, get it? Haha. -ha. But it's like a, a, a brownish red. I mean, not my favorite, but I'm sure somebody would love that thing. I do like the pick guard though. It almost looks clear and transparent, but it looks like it just matches the color of the guitar. The back was just left natural. Here was another one that tried to hide from you. At least it was correctly in the title. This is a 61 reissue 335 in candy apple blue. Now from this photo, just looks black, so I'm sure most people just passed over it. But you get it in the light, yep, you can see candy apple blue. Here was a delicious looking one, satin black metallic cherry blast. So it's basically a pink red burst on one of those cheaper Les Paul special tributes. As far as these refins go, I like it. And I like that they took the time to do it on the back. I just wish it would be teardrop shaped. So far, whoever sprays these ones always likes to do the perimeter burst. But it does appear to be a complete refinish. So you've got the same kind of dark purple finish right here on the neck as well. And then we have a new Electron series. So this was Electron Gold. Basically kind of like a brass looking color, a little bit of green, a little bit of gold, but it had a matching headstock to it, as well as being a complete refinish. The next one part of the Electron series was Electron Green. Pretty much same things here. It's kind of got some Widow-like vibes to it. It's got a light green border with a dark green finish here. Again, with the matching headstock and a full-on refinish on the back. And then, hey, I was really happy to see Electron Purple. Now, doesn't this guitar look a little bit familiar? Sugar Plum Fairy Les Paul? Yeah, I reviewed that, but this time it's like in left-handed format. Now, I think they changed it up a little bit, and obviously they gave it a new name, so maybe it looks completely different in person. But same thing on this one. Purple headstock, purple back, and okay, the one thing that has changed is mine had a stinger. I don't see that this one has the stinger. So if you buy something thinking it is truly a one-off, I'm pretty sure Gibson will accidentally repeat themselves, but they'll like try not to be like the exact same thing. At the end of the day, the stinger made mine cooler. <laughs> Now, is there an underlying meaning behind the Electron series? Like, is it trying to emulate some superheroes that have electrons to do with them? That reference is beyond me. But another series that's a little bit above my head is Wild Wallaby. So we've got your wallaby here. Is he blue? Does he have triangles on him? No. If anything, this finish more so reminds me of Monsters, Inc. Sully, because he had little dark spots like that and it was a blue color. So I'm really sad that they didn't have like a matching lime green one. That would have been cool. But these were essentially SG Moderns that they just put triangles on. Kind of reminds me of like some Picasso art or something. I don't know. But you also get purple pickup rings. But what I like about these is the fact that they did it for the entire guitar. But it wasn't just one wild wallaby. It wasn't just two wild wallabies. It was three. Three wild wallabies, and they were all very slightly different as you can see here on the screen. So pretty impressive showing this week from the mod collection. Now let's go to the demo shop. 
I don't have a lot to talk about this week because it was mainly just everything black. I think the reason why they opened it up to Canada is they were hoping they would be all excited because I first noticed that because some people were messaging me that they had talked to the demo shop at one point in time and they had sent them a message saying, hey, we shipped to Canada now. We've got 50 black guitars. Now, as of the time of recording, they've got about half of them left. And I wouldn't say these were necessarily steals of deals, but they were still less than retail if you're fine with some blemishes. Talking about our ebony finished ones, I was curious why this particular one sold above all the other ones. So I was looking at it, looking it over, and I realized, oh, it's the tuners. <laughs> I would love for Gibson to bring back the Schaller M6 style, but don't use the Schaller style tips. I don't like the way those look. I really like the Keystone style ones, just like they used back in the 70s. Technically, these offer you better gripping area, and I'm sure it just comes down to personal bias as to what I saw first is what it should be, but those just look a bit too big and clunky. But the day Gibson brings those tuners back on like everything is the day I'm happy. <laughs> Those Schallers still work great 40 plus years later. It seems the more popular ones were the Access Customs out of these because it's harder to get those things in Canada, so I'm sure they sold a few of them to those buyers. But this one was done up in gold hardware and had a pretty nasty ding back here. But then they also did one in like aged nickel right here, and then they blacked out the rest of the plastics. I thought that was a very smart looking version of a Les Paul Access. And then my other personal favorites were the 68 reissue Les Paul Customs. Now the other ones, they weren't that good of deals, but 68 reissue? Those things are $6,200 brand new, as compared to a regular one at $5,000. So $4,600 for one of these is a great deal, for one with a warranty. But they actually had quite a few of those 68s. But as far as the most interesting ebony finished guitars, we had this one, regular Les Paul Custom in gold, but I was like looking for specific defects on these things to make this interesting. And this one, they kind of covered up the binding a little bit, not that big of a deal, they probably could have scraped that off. Same thing with this, but they had a little bit of overspray, and it looks like they needed to clean up the pick guard a bit. And that was pretty much the worst thing I could find. I mean, this SG Modern was actually quite beautiful. I like the purple pickup rings on these things because it matches the rest. They have the abalone topped HP style knobs. But the reason why this one ended up into the demo shop is there's a ding on the horn right there. But instead of a ding, I wonder if that was the buffer who accidentally went a little bit too hard in that area. I'm sure that'd be very easy to do. But did you guys know Gibson did a dirty, dirty thing? The SG Moderns no longer get locking tuners. They get these tiny Grovers. I, I think that's a bad move, but it, maybe it's because they couldn't get enough locking tuners. I'm not sure. But being called an SG Modern and not having locking tuners kind of seems like they took away something that was very modern about them. Next up in our little series here, Traditional Pro 5. So it was done up in a custom exclusive satin finish here, but I think a lot of people miss this. They left the neck natural and just probably oiled it or just put a clear finish on it, whereas the rest of the guitar is red. I really like that look. I mean, I know I like all things stingers because they were cool back in the day. You never saw them. I mean, now that the demo shop's out here, you see them all the time. So it's lost a little bit of its luster, but it's still cool to see them around. I just like seeing some character being thrown into these mods. There's another double gold, this time a 54 reissue. We've been seeing these for a couple of weeks now. This time, it's a natural back though. This Les Paul Classic had beautiful wood grain, so I wanted to share it with you. Not so much on the back, but then there was also a tribute in left-handed that also had some cool wood grain and was also boring on the back. Now, as far as the things that sold right away, you can see them right here. I'll talk about the coolest ones. This one needs no introduction, traditional Pro 5. Absolutely stellar top on that. I'm glad they gave it the clear pick guard. I wouldn't say 2400 was a steal on one of these. I think they were like 2800 brand new though. So it's still an okay price. You get your locking tuners, you get your blubbery burst finish. And it looks like they swapped out our pickups for ones that do not have pole pieces exposed. But yet they're still burst bucker pros. There was a 335 in olive drab. Nothing too special, but a decent price. And this 50 standard P90 had a little bit of cool wood grain back here. Very zebra wood like vibe. And now to end out today's episode, we already heard the news about the European demo shop opening up to new countries, but they must have overworked themselves last week listing all of these guitars that a lot of them are still there because they only had one this week. Well, at least there was only one when I first checked. Now they refreshed the page. It just seems they didn't release everything at the same time. We had a couple of new ones, but nothing really worth talking about today. <laughs> RD Artist Bass. Granted, that's a pretty rare model that you don't see all the time, and I'm sure 1500 is not too bad of a price to have something that you can do all that stuff on, and you don't see it too often in Europe. And to be fair, this sold incredibly fast. 
But all right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed the recap this week. Lots of cool stuff. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.